I'm JD the Media Jack. I'm James Carberry 80. And uh, we're sitting down to uh, just discuss a game that you and I had purchased recently and put in a lot of hours already. And it's something that uh, I wasn't expecting to have this sort of feeling <laughs> or reaction about. And yes. that game is... WWE 2K22. Right. So for the TLDR, uh, Too Long Didn't Read, this is not what you would expect if you were coming off of 2K19. And we won't refer to that other game because it didn't exist. But <laughs> Yeah, what other game? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But 2K22, surprisingly fun to play. And they changed up a lot of things. They streamlined a few things. And, I mean, I'm rather impressed by this game. Yeah, I, I have a feeling uh, they were like, look, 2K, either you put out a good game or you're done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they had their issues because all the roster cuts, like, in real life. Yeah. And then it's just, you know, it's kept... You know, what's the game going to be like? Because of all that craziness that's happening in the real world. Yeah. So. yeah. so, again, TLDR, this game is fun to play. It's a step away from 2K19, and there are some changes between this game and the prior game. But you'll be pleasantly surprised to play it once you get past the learning curve of the new control scheme. That was the biggest thing, especially for me coming off all of the previous 2K games and jumping to this one thing. I knew, they, obviously, they, they, they formed us as new controls, but I didn't think it would be that drastic of a change. It's kind of like more arcade like and it's not more simulation, I guess. It's still a simulated game, obviously, but it's more kind of like the classic WWF No Mercy and WrestleMania 2000. WrestleMania 2000, no. yeah, exactly. So if... If you're old enough, like me, to remember playing those games on the N64, you you will get that nostalgic feeling of playing WWE 2K22. You don't have to watch the video uh, or the rest of the video if you don't want to, but uh, thank you for sticking around as we get deeper into this game. There are multiple modes in 2K22. We'll start off with the control scheme, which... Is a bit of a change. Definitely. Yeah. Again, going. Definitely. To, yeah. Again, going from 2K19 to 2K22, the block used to be the triggers on your controller. Now, now block is just flat out the Y button. Or you know whatever other button in case you're playing PS4. You know. Yeah. Okay. The triangle button. Yeah. So the top button, and also there's a there's a chance to block an attack if you can guess what that attack. is is if it's a, a light attack, a heart attack, or a grapple attack. Grapple. And there also is no reversal limit anymore compared to the previous uh, last few entries. Yeah. They got rid of the stamina bar as well. Which makes it more arcade like instead of more like simulating uh, later in the match, you know, you're not as tired. Exactly. Sure. You still do signatures and you still do finishers. Um, it, it seemed as though, I haven't been able to figure it out yet, but uh, you stumbled across it at one point in time where you were able to do a, a double team inside the ring. The new button scheme and the new control scheme, like it, it's, it definitely is more arcadey and it takes a little bit to get used to, but you can really get into a rhythm as long as you're willing to do the tutorial because, my goodness, that is handy. And, yes. And, and secondly, like just get some hours in and get some practice and get that muscle memory down to like not pull a trigger, but hit that top button on your controller to prevent being attacked. Which I still haven't learned how to do. <laughs> <laughs> Getting into the actual modes of the game, as every WWE 2K game has, they have different ways to play. You have the showcase, which features Rey Mysterio, and then you have universe mode, which they added a few changes to that. You have my GM, my faction, my rise, which is the story mode, and then the online lobby. So we'll start off with the showcase, which is all about Rey Mysterio. And yeah, Rey Mysterio's journey. In 2K19, the showcase was Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson. And if you bought the 
uh, the accelerator. accelerator. Or, yeah, that's it. If you bought the accelerator, you unlocked everything <laughs> and you didn't have to go through the showcase. There was no reason other than just to see what the story was and to listen to Daniel Bryan retell his career. This time around, they locked certain things behind the wall of the showcase. You had to get through each match and do certain things to recreate what happened in those iconic matches of Rey Mysterio. They've had these modes, guys, for since back in WWE 13. That's like ages ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and those ones usually dragged on a lot because they had a lot of wrestlers to go through. The last few showcases they've done from like 16 to now, it's just more on one person. And there's only like maybe, I don't know, JD, like 10 matches you have to do with Rey Mysterio, I think, give or take. Yeah, give or take, yeah. In the beginning of each match, he talks about the match. And another cool thing they added was in mid-match, they do mid, in the middle of a move or something, they go right to the real-life cutscenes. Yeah, the real, the real footage. Transition. Yeah, and it, it's cool to see that. And... You, you notice at the very beginning of this of this showcase, it is kind of a double whammy showcase because it is Rey Mysterio, yes, but it's also showcasing Eddie Guerrero. Yes, which I, I think maybe if they do more DLCs, maybe they do another showcase featuring Eddie Guerrero like and maybe have Rey Mysterio narrate it or somebody like, I can't be Vicky Guerrero at the moment, but someone close to Eddie's family that can showcase, you know, more about him because he's pretty much worldwide a beloved wrestler yes the next mode just going in the order of the screen is the universe mode and the universe mode is something that you and i enjoy playing on 2k19 it we get to basically go through our own stories and, and go up against our own challenges and also act like a general manager well they've added something to this universe mode you have the typical sandbox which is what you and i are used to and then you have the superstar mode where you pick one superstar and then you just go along this year as that one superstar yeah it's kind of i i think the reason why they put it in there i could be wrong i've seen a lot of like other content creators do that to where they'll be like, oh, I'm going to play WWE 13, but only as so-and-so, like The Undertaker. They go through the whole thing and tell their own story. Yeah. So I think that's probably why they did that. Yeah. It, it, it's it's a sign as to how uh, 2K has taken this game and, and streamlined it in a way for the fans and the new to the game players. You know, you get an option of like, yeah, you can go sandboxing. You just have at her and change this and change that and whatever. But picking that one superstar, you go through an entire year as anyone you want. But that you're just locked into that one character, which, I mean, sometimes that's all you want. It They kind of streamlined it to like a typical fighting game in a way. Like you have your main character because and they all have different combos and movesets. So it's kind of like you, you know, if you pick that one character, like you, you get better. uh uh, memory of their moveset and the combos. Yeah, that's actually something that we haven't touched on yet either. Combos are a part of this game, the part of the combat. You start off with the light attack and then you go into a subsequent three button sequence or four button sequence, which can be all light attacks or a light attack into a heavy attack heavy. or a light attack into a heavy attack into a grapple. And it it, again, it streamlines the the action. It makes it more arcadey. You don't have to worry about uh, like up, up, down, down, or anything of the sort. But it is a button mash heavy. It's kind of like a Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter in a way, where you have to put the certain input in order to get the move you want. Yeah, and and like I again, like I'm kind of a fan of it. Like it's it's a change from 2K19. But like it's it's an easy, simple thing. You just mash away. Know that you start off with a light attack and then just kind of build from there. Right. The next feature is my GM. And this is where I ran into my first problem chronologically from the page, like the landing page of the game. My GM is where you are a general manager. You pick your avatar it can be Sonny Deville Shane McMahon Stephanie McMahon William Regal or whatever the hell his name is not important enough to remember 
<laughs> memory, JD. Memory. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> anyway, it's a uh, it's a two player game. Uh, you can play uh, either against the AI or you can play against a second person, a second human. And this is my first problem: is that it is local only. Yes. Like, which is all, yeah, yeah it's, it is kind of a big problem maybe they can patch that at some point um, but at this point yeah it is only local multiplayer or multiplayer the only good thing is unlike the original 2006 which I had to experience firsthand you need two controllers to do that and I stupidly only brought one controller over one time with my cousin Mark <laughs> so I had to go all the way home get another controller at least they, at least they fixed that where you know you only need one controller yeah. to activate the two player GM mode yeah but you, you pick your avatar, and then you pick your show, and each avatar has a bonus, and each show has a bonus, and then you go through anywhere from a, the minimum I think is like a 15 week. 15 to 50. 15 to 50 week season, and you pick your venue, you pick your stars, you go through a draft, uh, you have a set budget, and you have to make an income as well as grow your fan base as you go head to head with this other player, either the AI or another human and this is the part that makes me a little ticked off is the fact that like i would love to go head to head with you james but you yeah. live in ohio i live in british columbia and <laughs> it, it just ain't gonna happen nope not gonna happen anytime soon my friend yeah but i did uh. do i did complete a 15 week my gm and i was hooked like it was it was a challenge and it was fun to try to figure out a budget and grow a fan base and then try to just manipulate a storyline and rivalries and then use these bonus cards and then get upgrades. It, I I sat through from start to finish a 15 week season in my GM and I just, I loved it. I was, I, I can't, yeah. I, like I look forward to playing another round. Yeah, uh, it's definitely, I'm going through it on my own channel with, uh, you know, my mentioned cousin Mark. Yeah. And it's a lot of fun. The only complaint I have with it is the fact there's only two titles on each show. There's only the World Championship and the Women's Championship. There's no mid-card, no tag um, compared to the old games. It's kind of a letdown, but at least they have the core mechanic yeah. of the GM mode uh, done right. And another good thing, a good thing they did is you don't have to worry about some superstars having a contract expiring. Unlike the old games where you had to worry about literally every single superstar. Yeah. Now some of them are just permanent. Kind of the mid-carters to upper-carters, some of them can do that. Yeah. Then, of course, you have the legends, which are expensive, but worth it. Yeah. Um, and and they have a bunch of jobbers they added. Yeah, and they're the ones who are under contract, too. Legends, you have to renew their contracts. So I, I, I want to I'm, – I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised by my GM – I'm a little bit disappointed that it's not online co-op because I think that would be something that they're really missing out on is the ability oh. to go head to head with, you know, like me and you doing my GM online. It, it, you would think that that would be something that they would have included, but unfortunately that sort of option is just not there. Yeah. Uh, another quick thing I forgot to mention. Uh, in the settings, uh, when you create your roster, you can actually make decide which superstars can be legends or just standard superstars. I did not know that. Yeah, I, I was doing it with Mark, and I, I figured that out. Yeah. Next on the landing page is my faction, and uh, <laughs> emphasis on the F, because this this oh, is fun. just. Oh, <laughs> this is where they're dipping their toes into micro transactions, and uh, I refuse to bite. I mm. <laughs> yeah, no, nope. There's some games I've done that on, and I still do to this day. That's okay. Something like this, no. Especially the main mechanic is you have cards that you get, yep. and that's your superstars. Which I guess for card collectors and stuff, that's fine. But like for standard wrestling fans who don't really care about the cards, like it's kind of a weird reason to put microtransactions in the game. So you and I got a starter pack, and we got the exact same starter pack, which was weird. And I yeah. I tried a few few rounds with my faction, and I 
I don't, I don't get the point. I don't understand. I don't see the benefits or the rewards. I, I don't, I don't get it. And the only thing I do understand is the fact that they're trying to monetize something in this game to, to grease the wheels a little bit more, but this is such a step away from anything else that only truly someone who's looking for a different challenge would find any sort of entertainment out of. Like I said, I tried a couple of rounds with this thing and it's like, I, I'm, I'm using a wrestler that I'm not exactly familiar with and I am not understanding the rewards and it says I need to <laughs> yeah. buy this to get new cards, but I, I just like, okay, fine. Yeah. You know what? At least it's not tied to everything else. <laughs> the fact that they added microtransactions, which, you know, every game nowadays pretty much has microtransactions. Yeah. It just seems like an unnecessary step. Like, couldn't you just like, you can get the currency manually. So I don't know why you would need the, Oh, pay a hundred dollars to get these microtransactions. No. <laughs> <Just know. laughs> well, they have to have some sort of way for you to grind through. I mean, otherwise it's just a flat yeah. out money pit, right? But it, it, it goes along so slowly. And again, like it, unless someone really finds a challenge and interest in this specific part of the game, it, it, it's 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 forever going to be something on the landing page. I'm going to be going past. Yes. Yes. Agreed. The last thing on the landing page is My Rise, which is the story mode for WWE 2K22. What do you yes. think? What do you think? And this time, um, so far, I, I've demoed a bit of it, uh, at least on the male side. Because in this game, guys, you have two different stories. You've got the uh, men's side and the women's side. So, um, And they each have different stories. It's not the same thing. And I've played the male side a little bit so far, and I do like I it. Some older stuff it's it's kind of puts you in dream matches as well. Like, I had literally had a dream match. match, like, dreaming of it, of <laughs> The Rock and Stone Cold teaming up in a handicap match against me. The story mode in My Rise, it gives you the option to, to be a, a heel or be a face, depending on your choice. And you can actually flip flop back and forth. You're not necessarily locked into being a heel the entire time or being a face the entire time. And also surprise, surprise, your character isn't a prick. <laughs> no matter whether you are a heel or a face, you know, like there, there is yeah. some respect there. There is some heart there. And I've, I've dabbled in both the male story mode and this female story mode. And yeah, they're completely separate and they are independent of each other. And there's a nice, nice little touch to that of not tying it together, nor is it on rails both, both ways. Ways. So that. it's well, I'm it's I'm rather am impressed because, by uh, my rise. Yeah, they definitely took the time to add a little bit more story compared to like you know just going through the the motions of just all like showcase stuff. The last sort of uh, gameplay feature is the online lobby, which I I, I don't know about you, James, but uh, I I have a disdain for playing against randos online, especially a wrestling game. Yes. Like that's just no, not gonna happen for me. Yeah, it, it goes to the fighting game thing where you try to play online and then get crapped on by someone that's played a hundred hours into the game compared to your ten. Yeah, no. so it's just like, no, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather play with my friends. Exactly, and so that locks us down to just having a private lobby. And um, in two K nineteen, you and I have and repeatedly successfully were able to start a private lobby, pick a wrestler, have a match, go back into the lobby, change the match, have another match, blah, 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 back and forth, back and forth for like a couple of hours. This time around, what a fuck around. Holy crap. <laughs> it, like, Yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. <laughs> so uh, I, had, I had to create a private lobby and then invite James to it. I, like, just just going through the first time, create a private lobby, invite James to it. I figured let's just get warmed up. It'll be uh, two on one, James and myself versus someone, and like an an AI. I'm not going to subject that sort of beating to just a random 
person. Um, and I couldn't, I couldn't figure out how to move my character designation from the victim, the, the solo <laughs> of this handicapped tag team. Yes. And it, 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 in a slight blink, as soon as every character has been selected, it goes, uh, reorder or something like that and Re reset teams reset teams. yeah reset teams and it, you, you hit the button quickly and like oh okay now we can choose who we are wrestling against and where the teams are what the hell were you <laughs> thinking <laughs> yeah they definitely uh compared to 19 they definitely took a back step in uh the way the lobbies were because now guys you can't just you know if we do a handicap match that's the only thing you can do you have to back out make a no, new lobby, make a new match set, and keep doing that. And it's just like, why would you step back to something that was working the previous game? Exactly. The way the online lobbies work now is is different as well. There's an entire list of public lobbies mm -hmm. that you can join and drop in, drop out, blah, blah, blah. But, like, I, I, I wonder, like, what the thought process or what it would take to just, like, here's a private lobby, adjust it as you please, invite whoever you want, and then just that is the, its own bubble like the, the way that was in 2k19 was perfect because we didn't have to leave every single time we were like let's try a different match no we just adjusted yes. it and fucking went another thing we haven't figured out is how to put entrances on yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean still haven't figured that out <laughs> no but at the same time like looking at what they've done in 2k22 like there was they streamlined a lot of things and so adding the entrances would probably make things a little bit more slower and bog things down. So there's, right. there's a chance that they just disabled entrances for online play, which again, kind of speaks to them streamlining. So with that, create a superstar. Again, there's a lot of streamlining that happens there. Now, they haven't limited things, but they just made things simpler. You pick your out of the four, you pick what style you want to be. Uh, striker, Technician, Powerhouse, and I think the last one's High Flyer. Yes, exactly. Thank you. And then of that four, you pick whether you're a, a cruiserweight, a light heavyweight, a heavyweight, or a super heavyweight. And then you get another four options. Are you from an MMA background? Are you a pro athlete background? Are you, uh, I forget what the third one was. Actor. That's the fourth one. So let's see, MMA. Indie. Indie wrestling, yep. Yeah, yep. exactly. So again, it gives you four options. It gives you like, what's your style? How heavy are you? And then what's your background? And then like, it, it, it really does like, it, it hones in what your character can be from the very get go. So that when you get into the fine tuning, you already have a lot of the work already done. Yes. Yes. And a lot of things they they what they took out they took out most of the abilities, so there's no pin escape. There's no they it, they kind of integrated it already into the game. Yeah, where everyone has like a like a ring escape depending on what ability you have. Like say for example, someone like uh, Rey Mysterio, he has a comeback sequence. Not all wrestlers have comebacks. Yes, the attributes are still the same as it has been, which is pretty easy to mess with. Mm -hmm. The persona thing. They also have set attires for, you know, if you want to be something from the 80s or you want to be like an old time, like medieval style wrestler for whatever reason. Or someone um, who, or someone who's in the cosplay or someone who's an entertainer yeah. or sports or someone who walked in off the street. Or... <laughs> You're like a homeless bum where I'm going to be a wrestler. I can do a suplex. <laughs> Why not? So they definitely have learned their lesson and they keep it like 2K19 and it still has all pretty, pretty much almost everything you could customize uh, previously. Yeah. With every new game, there's going to be DLC. I mean, that's just the world we live in right now. And WWE 2K22 is no different. You have the Accelerator and you have the Season Pass, which comes with different wrestlers sure. being released at different points and times. And you also have... Uh, the, what's the other thing? The other thing besides, well, the other thing would be the microtransactions that you find in the store. Yeah, but um, that's never happening. <laughs> yeah. 
But, um, I think it's. I think currently, just at this time of date, it's just the accelerator and the season pass and all the transaction crap. I just bought the standalone edition, so I haven't bought the Undertaker or the NWO one. That was like way more. Yeah, like double the price. So, but you did buy the accelerator. Yes, I I, I do that for every everyone, especially after seeing how long it takes to get the actual in-game currency. Um, so it's only like $5 here in the U S I said, I said, uh, most of the time I'm like, I rather just pay dollars, get everything unlocked so I can get right to gaming and enjoy the game without grinding heavily in a fighting game. Yeah. I got the deluxe edition, which is the, it came with the accelerator. It came with, uh, the season pass and I'm looking at what's coming out with the season pass. And there's a lot of wrestlers that I'm looking forward to having in the roster. It also makes it so that if, and when I buy the new edition Xbox series X, this game will transfer over. So there's, yeah. there is that perk. And I do plan on getting that in, an, in the future. So I'm not upset with the price it, it is a little up there. Um, yeah, I'm thinking the reason why they did that because it raz it like it really is more expensive than prior games. I think they're trying to recoup losses from that thing that we will not talk about bef- that came after 20k <laughs> or that came 19. after WWE 2K19. So yes, I think I think that's what that was. Saying that, you have to think that a lot of chips were on the table for this game. 2K mm. games were probably at like back against the wall, whatever metaphor you want to use. They know that the game that shall not be mentioned was an abst- absolute clusterfuck. And so they had to come out swinging with this game. Yeah, like I said earlier, it's either that or be done. Yeah, so. exactly. And these games do come out typically yearly, besides, you know, the thing we're not going to talk about. You know, they took a whole another year just to get this game right, which is surprising they actually let them do that. Yeah. Because usually they're like, come on, we got to get the game out every year. Got to get the game out every year. Yeah. With that being said, have you experienced any other issues or glitches or anything of the sort with WWE 2K22? The only two I can think of is the first one is in the showcase, which, um, uh, when you, at least on my Xbox, I don't know if it experienced anybody else who's played it, who's had the experience. When in the cutscenes where Ray talks about the match, it like stutters. So he continues to talk, but the screen itself stutters, and then all of a sudden it like instantly transmissions to like Ray Mysterio. Um, that's the main thing I've noticed, but it could be a patch fix eventually. The second thing they still haven't fixed is like getting caught in the ropes. So half your body, so your legs stuck in the rope. You try moving, the rope's still going with you. <laughs> so those are the only two I can think of. It pretty much covers everything. Ultimately, yeah. like this is the f- first wrestling game I've paid full price for in a very long time, and quite frankly, like I'm I'm rather surprised and embarrassed about how many hours I've already logged into this game. And that is honestly a credit to how much fun this game is. Unlike JD, I buy the game every year. <laughs> so um, besides the one we won't talk about, um, or we will mention, I buy them every year, especially after 19, because I've loved that one. It's probably up there with all the 2K games they've made, probably one of the best ones up until this point here. Yeah. Uh, the combos are great. The creation's great. The universe is just how it should be. The addition of GM mode is great. Just make it online, please. You know, they took all the right steps, and they gave a lot of fans what they wanted. Like, people have been asking for GM mode since 2007 ended, you know? And they finally took them, like, 10-plus years, but they finally listened. Yeah. Like, here you go. Yeah. The, the only thing, like, I agree, everything... I agree with everything you just said. Um, my faction is f- f- pretty much forever going to be something that I'm just going to continue to just skip over. Yeah. I, I couldn't care less about that sort of thing within the game. The only thing that I think 
is missing and it's something that has not been present since like the PlayStation 2 games is bring back special guest referee for That's crying cool. out loud. Yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> like <laughs> they're so fun. It, it was... the matches, fast count. <laughs> like, <laughs> or just the ability to be able to like lay out, you know what? Go online and just be a referee, be a career referee online. Imagine how much fun that would be. Screwing over people. Yeah. <laughs> One, two. <Yeah. laughs> this is not... <laughs> so ultimately, I'm rather surprised and pleased with this game, and you know, I'm I'm going to continue to play it, and I'm going to be playing it oh, online, yeah. private lobbies, uh, difficulties be damned. I'm going to be gaming with you on this for quite some time. Oh yeah, at least until they release a new one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. thanks for joining us i'm jd the media jack i'm carberry 80 take care everyone